happen. Sorry, this is the Marley call for Monday, May 8th, 2023. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so so the the uh, so, so this this destination piece. So we wanted to to uh, summarize, you know, what what does a community look like that has secured its environment, its watersheds, um, and its food, uh, and you know, uh, that. Uh, so I introduced the the idea of the bioregion. Um, to and, and to explain, you know, why why that is an important part of a local or regional food system. Um, I had a chance to explain that in some detail at a at a uh, meeting we were invited to by the biotech industry. Hmm. Yeah. So this is a magazine, um, an online magazine, and they're going out to you know some huge number of people uh, is, a, is a global audience um, and that's really the first time to my knowledge that someone from the regenerative movement had an opportunity to talk to the biofuel sector and 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 explain you know the idea that 40 percent of corn being used for biofuel is not a great idea when I mean, you have food shortages breaking out all over the world now so so anyhow so that was so so what we my understanding of what we are you know doing in this context here hi patty hi pete is is to is to define what what does what does it really look like when you have uh, a destination in you know where, where a community that secures its watersheds its environment and its food supply in a nutshell Thanks, Klaus. Um, we started it with Klaus and me, and I was like, uh, what would you like to see come out of this? And we started, he started back with Garden World Politics, Doug's uh, book, and then moved toward bioregionalism uh, as part of that. And that's kind of where we are. So uh, if anybody would like to check in, we can do that. Go ahead, Pete. Um, thanks. Thanks, Dre. Um, and hello, everybody. Um, uh, I would like to do like um, a show and tell uh, for a few minutes of um, uh, Earth, Moon, Stars, Space, um, and the uh, the organizational structure of it, um, because I think it it kind of demonstrates the organizational structure I was thinking that we might want to use for Marley and actually all the sub Marleys. Um, I would actually make them separate organizations. So I'm excited about it because it was just yesterday that I wrote everything down and so it's top of mind, but we could also, we, I, I, we can also wait on it, and, but, um, but I think it might be useful for Marley. I'm interested um, and I'm forgetting what mode and what medium you shared it out with us because I remember this is you asking- uh, The OGM list. Okay, this is, this is you basically writing short stories with ChatGPT or? Uh, it's the idea of having a, a thing kind of like Plex, but it's fiction, short stories, very short stories, right. 100 or 200 word stories and, a, and an illustration. So it's conceptually very similar to, I don't know if that's true, conceptually similar, not very similar, conceptually similar to uh, Marley. Um, not that I was pattering after Marley, but um, but the, 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 the special thing from this call would be talking about the organizational structure of it. Mm -hmm. Cool. And not, I, that, I that. not that I think Marley should have the same structure, but at least it should be inspired, you know, kind of in the same realm. That sounds great. Please, uh, I'd love that unless somebody has an objection and it sounds like they're still working on your ceiling. Yes. On your roof, rather. And you can hear me okay? Yeah, just fine. The funny thing is we've had a respite for like four days or something like that with the weekend and some rain and stuff. So I <laughs> well, we haven't been having calls. I, you know, it's been totally quiet and now that there's a call. They know, they know. I guess. Um, so let me present real quick. Cool. Um, I meant to be a little bit more prepared for this, um, but I had another call go along right before this. But and I, just I, in okay. just in case anybody wants to look at the message you posted to the list, I think that link will get you there. 
um yeah uh a different yeah that's great um, a different list would be wiki dot or star space um, this is so the wiki is essentially a business plan all the pages of the wiki are a business plan you can you can think of it that way um and then the there's a prototype of the journal which is like here and for plex readers it should look familiar um and i don't know if this is it's, I, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing i i came up with the idea and i wrote it all up and just did it um i didn't even ask anybody if they i so usually it's not a bad idea to ask another human hey would you know what do you think about this you know and get some ideas i just went for it because i could kind of see the whole thing in my head mm -hmm. um, so um the the organizational structure is patterned after something that i'm starting to document myself but it's related to the lionsburg org, org structures and the david bovell's map of the future org structures um, so it's in that context. Um, uh, so the idea of the organizational structure, one, one, of the, um, one of the key things is even though this is a tiny little project, um, it's, it's a whole organization all onto itself. So think of it like a little startup company. Um, uh, the other thing uh, that is a key, I think, is the project owns itself. So um, there aren't equity owners of this project. The project owns itself. Um, <clears throat> I, am, I am doing this after listening to David and Jordan talk about this stuff for a long time. <clears throat> and I am making stuff up. Uh, uh, in particular, both of them have more experience meeting up with the legal system for this stuff. Um, I have gone kind of, I, I, I haven't done that. <clears throat> so I think some of the ways that I've, I've said stuff, it's the right flavor, the right idea, and morally right maybe is a way to think of it. I don't know that it's legal. And both Jordan and David are, have legal structure that attaches to the, the morally right part. So caveat for that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I say that this project owns itself and, it, and, and all of its project assets. So then um, a thing in this, in this game, the, the way that you play this organizational structure game is you're really clear about what assets belong to who. So there's assets that belong to the, the project. Um, there's assets that are used by the project but aren't owned by the project. Um, I kept the option to this this cool domain name if it's cool or stupid i'm not sure which yet um, uh, i've kind of retained the right to own it um, i'm loaning it to the project uh, for the time being and um, uh, if it ever wants to buy it from me i'm happy for that um, uh, if it says yeah i don't like this whole loan thing we'll just make another one pete and go away and take our ball and go home Actually, your, your, your language on the page says it's loaned to the project indefinitely. It doesn't say until further notice. Uh, the, read the next sentence. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Hadn't read that. I, I, uh, I had to twist my arm to put reasonable notice on here. I was okay. like, I'm just going to like yank it. And then, and then the, the hat, the Earth, Moon, Stars space project said, no, it has to be reasonable notice. Pete. Um, so uh, this project, uh, the, the business model for this project uh, is focused on generating stories and community, it's maximizing social good, not profit. Um, it's not extractive. Um, so the idea of this, uh, it, there is income coming in to cover server costs, and I hope to pay um, contributors a little bit. Um, so the so nobody gets equity in this project um, because it owns itself, but the project does, uh, let me find a page called stories. Um, the in-game currency uh, for this project is called stories. Um, 
So if you write a story, uh, which includes the text and the image, if you write a story um, and it gets published, uh, you've earned one, one story's worth of in-game currency. Um, uh, there's other kinds of things that get denominated in stories, particularly like, uh, uh, like uh, server setup, uh, server uh, sysadministration, sysadministration, uh, editorial board people, edit editors get paid um, in per hour in stories and uh, stewards get paid in stories uh, for their hours. Yes, Jerry. Would it help to name the currency different from the element that you're, they're getting rewarded for, even if it was a phonetically different, like a different spelling, like S-T-O-R-Y-S, -S, so that when you said stories, people wouldn't confound the currency with the artifact? It is uh, It is a great idea. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but it's. I, I like it. Um, I, I actually like that. I like that. I like the one-to-one -one nature of of it being spelled Me too. as stories. But I, I, I but then it's confusing. I, I totally get it. I like the one-to-one um, -one value uh, correlation. I get. I'm going to get rapidly confused if they're if if they're bound together name-wise. Totally fair. Um, uh, partly, partly just for convenience. Uh, I, I had already spent hours and hours on this, and I was thinking, oh, I could do, I could name the currency, and then it's like, the idea to to misspell stories is a good one. I like that. Um, uh, David, I think, tends to use a thing called Voz, V O Z. Um, uh, um, it's it's a good comment. Thank you. Um, I I did another word since we're talking about stories and denominations and stuff. There's a weird thing where um, these quick quick and dirty stories. Um, there's another question whether or not this is even a good idea. And so there's you're you're welcome to fill out the questionnaire on that. Um, I kind of so far it's kind of like mm, it's interesting, but. Mm. Um, anyway, I, I really, so personally, I'm weird. Maybe I really enjoy asking ChatGPT, tell me a story. Um, and, you know, tell me a story about lighthouses. Tell me a story about frogs. Tell me a story about frogs and, and pigs. You know, it's really good at this kind of stuff, making up little stories. And you can tell it to make a small story, a bigger story. This particular size of story, 85 words, <clears throat> um, I was trying to get it to fit in my stupid 500 character limit limit on my Mastodon account. And that's the only <laughs> reason it's so short. Otherwise, it would have been a couple hundred words. But I was experimenting with like squeezing them down. And this is still over. It's like 520 or something like 510. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short, I it, it turns out that, you know, um, oh, that's so sweet. You know, they rekindled by, you know, it's like, oh, this is cool. It's a cool little parable. I like interacting with ChatGPT, having it tell me little parables and saying, well, that was a stupid one or make up another one or, you know, whatever. So maybe other people will like this. Maybe they won't, whatever. Um, this is me going, okay, well, 85 words is really short. What if it was a little bit longer, make it longer? It did a pretty good job of that. So I forget why I'm going on about this. So anyway, one of these stories it takes me somewhere between 10 minutes and 60 minutes to put together, oh, uh, including, including, the image? The, including the image. Wow. And, you know, and yeah. so, and this one, this one, it ended up, uh, I, I did the kind of the versification of this. I, uh, I, this one took an hour. Um, I started with this image, which was probably a totally random image to, to ask, I asked it to make. And then I was like, okay, well, by the way, so now I can tell you a secret. Um, a premise that I have, the, the part of the whole conceit of this thing is nobody, like it's super, it's so easy to generate images nowadays that like if you post them anywhere, nobody's going to look at them because it's like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's a great image, Pete, but I've seen 20 of those and I'm going to see 20 more in the next two minutes, whatever. Um, similarly, like a, a little poem or a little story or a little parable, it's kind of like, eh, it's too hard to read. I'm reading other stuff. You know, I want to read about the Kardashians or something, something interesting or, or the coronation, something interesting. If you put the two together, if there's a story and an image, I think it's a special thing. I think it's, it's interesting. Um, and, and there is some 
human curation stuff that has put them together and you know has been thoughtful about them so it's easy to make this image kind of automatically um, it's easy to make this text automatically putting together is actually a, a little human exercise and so this one took me like a freaking hour or something like that because i was like well should it be verses should it rhyme should it not rhyme should it be you know what's the wording what's the the you know what's the anyway so somewhere between 10 minutes and an hour um uh so i'm i'm writing up uh you know here's the project roles and i think we've talked about this in marley you know there's going to be different kinds of yeah I, I had the role thing in the original um uh so editorial work stewardship work uh system administrator work two stories per hour. So if you if you are in an hour meeting as an editor or an hour meeting as a steward, you get two stories worth of, of uh, in-game currency. And so part of me is like, Pete, do you really want to uh, incentivize people to write, try to write two stories every hour? Really? Isn't your quality going to suffer because of that? And I'm like, well, I don't know. So I went back and forth on one or two hours, stories per hour for, for hourly work. So now I'm now I'm confused again, um, and yes. this is because it says it's valued at two stories per hour. And I initially thought, oh, okay, so that's the currency, and only means the currency. It doesn't actually mean an actual story was generated. It means that if you participated in this community in some other way, some other way than generating stories, yep. like being a sysadmin or a steward or an editor, you would yep. earn stories. And that would be equivalent to the work of generating a story and posting a story. And that's really yep. cool. And then you just contradicted that, the sentence after. And I'm like, ah, shit, what? So I'm How did I contradict I'm, it? Because then you said, do I want this system to be generating two stories per hour? What I, what I did was I flipped words. I, I flipped meanings really quickly. And this is an argument for having different words, probably okay. different pronunciations now, now that we've talked through it. What I said probably was something like, if if I'm an author, if I'm a contributor, and I'm looking at a stewardship thing, it's like, huh, you mean all I have to do is sit my butt down on a call for an hour, which I hope stewards don't do, and I hope editors don't do. But anyway, all I have to do is hang out on a call for an hour, and I get two stories of in-game currency. Um, why should I bust my ass trying to write stories when I can just, you know, sit and, you know, chat with people and I'll get two stories every hour instead of like so if, if if stories take somebody two hours to write they should spend their time being an editor instead but if they take 10 minutes to write if they take 10 minutes to write then they should write stories maybe and not be an editor yeah <clears throat> another question is what if somebody's game gaming the system and has figured out how to create a hundred stories per hour or a thousand stories per hour it turns out that I, I hadn't thought through that, but it turns out that um, there's some place where the editorial board basically picks what stories get published and there's going to be a limited number of them. So no matter how many you generate, you're not going to you're not going to win the game because you're you're generating so many stories. <clears throat> um, it's uh, that that is in contribution standards. Um, Story quality needs to be decent, um, and uh, editorial committee is going to be who decides what stories gets published. So it doesn't say it in here, but stories published is what counts for story points, not um, not stories generated and and submitted. So We're getting into the weeds so a little. Editorial committee that has to read all the submissions. Yes. Okay. They don't have to, they get to. It's like a joy of, of and, and wonder of their, their job. They get to read all the, the submissions, not just the, anyway. Um, a, an interesting thing that happened was me writing up the founder thing. So as founder of this idea, I felt like I should, you know, I thought about it, dreamed about it. Um, so I gave myself uh, something called founder recognition bonus at 12 stories because I spent a lot of time walking around thinking about this. So this is a little bit different from, you know, hey, I'm a co-founder and I own, you know, 20% of the company for in perpetuity. You can see I, I, my contribution is outweighs everything else at the very beginning, but pretty soon, you know, after 
after six issues or something like that, this is going to be fairly well diluted. So um, this is an interesting thought ex experiment right here and something that I think founders need to go through. And do you have a place that's toting up how many stories each participant has? Uh, it is called the Project Ledger. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's held in an Airtable base. OK. Um, and it's right. I assume at this point, it's honor system. Each participant logs in their own credits in the Airtable. The, the funny thing is, I. the funny thing is, it's all you know, uh, part of the project record, you know, so and so I at ed, ed, editorship editor editorial board work and stewardship work is going to be on calls, it, it wouldn't be a solo. But still uh, automating who was on this call and then toting that into an air table in some kind of kind of automatic way seems like it's kind work. of kind of voluntary it's but it's it's everybody's going to check everybody else right yeah um, I mean, there'll be, be there'll be evidence there'll be a there'll be a bit of a trail yeah. but it's yeah. still manual on our system yeah uh the other thing is this is a centralized ledger it's not a um it's not a blockchain ledger yet um for this project that's fine for a project where you've got a bunch of different people participating from different organizations and you can't necessarily trust that volunteer access to the to the air table then you would maybe use a blockchain um, ledger. Um, uh, I think that we went through the, oh, uh, another really interesting outcome of trying to write this all up was that um, you, wanna, you wanna have a idea of the project health. Um, so if we're meeting these metrics, then the project is healthy. If we're not, then something is going wrong and um, the stewardship Council needs to figure out what's going on and fix it or kill the project or whatever. Um, but most of the stories will be generated by generative AI. Um, most of the stories, it's an interesting, interesting way to say it. Um, I'm going to say it a different way. Most of the stories are generated by humans using AI. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, Anybody we, else? We uh, we have a different a different view of how the AI human relationship works, um, which is fine. Um, and and not the interesting part of for Marley, I think the interesting part for Marley. I'll go. Although actually, Marley is going to be inevitably using a bunch of uh, ChatGPT um, for better or for worse. Um, but the interesting part is kind of the way this, this structure came together. There's roles, there's um, there's proportional shares. The proportional shares are not equity. The proportional shares are governorship, govern, governance and uh, profit sharing, if, if there is such a thing. Um, there's uh, accounting, there's a ledger, there's accounting for not like in-game currency and, and things that you have to convert from hours to in-game currency. Everybody else has been quiet. Thoughts, comments, reactions, suggestions? Yeah, I, I have too. I haven't been around for a few weeks, but um, I, I all of a sudden felt, and Pete, you alluded to this, like I was down in the weeds of something. Um, mm -hmm. As I understand it, Marley is the name of the big quote book project. And this is kind of a subset. And I'm still wondering, do we have a, a purpose or mission statement? For the project um let me, let me let me try to take that i and so and apologies for the confusion um and the confusion is totally reasonable even more confusing what i just presented is actually <laughs> not marley is a it's maybe a cousin of marley or or okay. a, a, a good friend <laughs> of marley um i would i would suggest pretty strongly that that Marley itself and then individual books within Marley have this organizational structure, mm -hmm. which, which sounds to me like a really big, heavy over. When I say it out loud like that, it's like, oh my God, Pete, great. You know, you just saddled this whole thing with a whole bunch of. So thanks, thanks for going. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, I the 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 way that decentralized work gets done is, or the. The hypothesis is that decentralized work—that's a mix of for-profit, non-profit, you know, social good, 
whatever the way that gets done is with it's it's by we the thing that we've been skipping over ogm has been doing this because it's been trying to figure this out um you set up a project and then it doesn't have the the rules here you know nobody's talked about is there does is there a thing that gets owned is there a thing that we're building together is there you know how do we do shares how do we account for shares so if you kind of upfront go through all of that and then everybody knows the rules of of the game um uh, I I hate that there are rules of a game. I wish that we could all just kind of kumbaya and just work together without figuring all this stuff out. But it it works are, better for there everybody. Are, there are other mechanisms. Um, yeah, and and the 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 thing that this does help with is when you've got um, people from different cultures and different backgrounds and different expectations, especially about. You know, oh, I thought we were all doing this for free. I thought, I thought we were all, you know, I thought we were getting a grant and we were all sharing the money proportionally. Um, you know, even though I didn't have to do any work, you know, I showed up and then anybody who's a member gets, you know, um, whatever, right? So set up the rules of the game. Uh, this is particularly helps in in, in in situations where you're, you've got different expectations. It's an expectation setting thing. So now to answer your question, come back a little bit more Stuart. This is a Earth Moon Star Space is a separate thing, but I, I went through the, the trouble and effort of writing down the structure and I, I was pretty happy with the, came, the way it came out. Um, Marley could lift and shift it. Marley could re-implement something totally different. Um, uh, Marley could also mix this with whatever it, it sees from Jordan or David or whoever else. Um, uh, I think it's really important to have an organizational structure for Marley and then probably for each each book. The and the the reason I think it's important to have the structure for each book is because if I'm contributing to a book, I'm not necessarily contributing to Marley and vice versa. So um, the the rule of the the rule of um, best practice maybe best practice is. Um, it, it's something like if you have different people contributing in different ways, or if the assets are different, um, especially if they're different kinds of assets, you want to make a new organization, even if even if the people overlap largely. And this is something that we don't see in corporate corporate things. It's like everything is part of the corporation, right? Everything accrues to the corporation. Everything's so they have trouble doing anything that's a little bit different or different shaped, or you have to go through a whole biz dev process to negotiate things beforehand uh, if you want you know, something in the middle. This is kind of built so, or I, the, the right way to do it is not to create a situation where there's something in the middle of Marley that all of a sudden needs to be separate. It's like, just separate it at the beginning. Take a template for this organizational structure, implement it, poof, you're done. Um, oh. So I'm still I'm still a little flummoxed. I, I get the need I get the need for structure, but you know, and I've said what this. What the heck are we doing? I've said exactly. <laughs> I've said this in every meeting I've been at. I can't I can't put the details in without some larger structure. I don't my, know where, I don't know where my, to hang them organizationally in my in my in my own mind. Bye, okay. I gotta go. Oh, we gotta go. We'll see you, Patty. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Um, my, I. So I, I, we, we kind of have an idea of what we're doing. We're building a bookshelf of neo books, um, uh, for OGM and you know whoever participates in OGM. My guess is one of our problems for the for the I'm gonna be for the purpose of. Um. The way I've described it to other folks is, you know how OGM is this kind of beautiful, fuzzy organization. It has, it has what I, you know, it, it has, it knows a lot about certain things. And, you know, when we all get together and, and kumbaya and OGM space, we're talking about soil health or regenerative agriculture or carbon you know carbon uh, mitigation or social justice or whatever we always just talk about it we don't write stuff down 
So why don't we kind of try to crystallize that, condense the vapor into something that has more form and shape so that we can at least start to, one of the, one of the ideas is just so that we can start to remember what we know. Um, because I've heard Klaus talking about so a generation a lot, but I, there's no book for it. <laughs> Let's just have a book for it so that OGM knows what it knows, right? And then once we have that, you can imagine that once OGM has a book about uh, regenerative ag or social justice or group facilitation, then we can share it with the world, right? Yeah, so, so I, what I'm suggesting in some ways is the obvious but I think it needs to be clearly and succinctly articulated. OGM is a network that has been going on for X number of years, exploring three years, ex <laughs> exploring major societal challenges and dilemmas, period. We have started a project within OGM called uh, Marley so that we can create um, uh, a record, you know, books, uh, 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 um, um, something to share um, with others uh, about um, what the OGM group or, or certain individuals um, see. Um, and that's, that's what the project is. I mean, I would feel more comfortable with that. Something so we've said that, we've said that over and over, but we haven't had a framework, we haven't had a governance framework in which we, we said, okay, Marley has said this, Marley has said this, <laughs> not, not Pete on behalf of Marley or Jerry on right. behalf of Marley or Stuart on behalf of Marley. We haven't done that. So kind of the next step is saying, okay, there's a Marley organization, here's the organizational rules, here's whose governance, here's the editorial, here's the way the editorial board is set up. Uh, is a is a book on um, a, the the sequel to um, Anarchist Cookbook? Is that an OGM book? Editorial board says no. Who's on the editorial board that says no? What's their charter, right? So, great. Um, one thing, and then Klaus, I'd love to know how you what you're thinking. Um, and I think Stacy's on the road. Um, I'm happy to hear from you as well. So, I think I see Marley as Two th I'm only going to describe two things right now. One of them is Marley is kind of the publishing arm of OGM, which means a bunch of different sorts of things. It means we're going to actually create artifacts that come out of whatever wisdom OGM holds. And there, there'll be an editorial board of some sort that figures out which one is an artifact, which is not, what, you know, what is in bounds, what is out of bounds, how do we do it, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, and then how we treat each project is a separate, deeper question. There's a different aspect of Marley that's really important to me, which is Marley is an experiment in pushing and leveling up media and in stopping thinking about books. The books are just shiny objects to bring people in to go, oh, look, there's a book. I know what a book is. Um, the more interesting thing is the curated wisdom that is on markdown files in a kind of wiki uh, in a space in, in the commons, in a space where anybody could come find it, to which we're going to do a bunch of other stuff, um, aside from sort of linking it together, but we're going to repurpose some of the modules, uh, you know, reuse them in multiple Marley uh, volumes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the artifacts inside, under the hood, in the wiki, are going to be far more powerful and interesting and useful than just the ebooks that that get turned out. Uh, and so so for me, the the publishing of an ebook is kind of interesting but only, uh, only like a surface level thing. I'm vastly more interested in what happens to the content of those books and how it is made more useful, more accessible, uh, yeah. more, more automatable. So the, purpose, so the purpose is to create a resource uh, of the um, brilliance of the uh, open global mind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or, or, or in fact, you could sort of twist, turn that up just a tiny bit and say it's to instantiate an open global mind of some sort in some prototype form. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Jerry, I heard you say two things, or, or that is two things. There's the, the content volumes, however we end up calling them neobooks or whatever. Um, and then 
it sounded like you were talking about the Marley production process. Um, I'm not uh, sure. I think Marley production process to me is still, hey, here's a bunch of markdown files. We're going to roll them up. We're going to put front matter and end matter, and we're going to squeeze them out through Pelican or EPUB or something, you know, into a into a book format. So the Marley production process to me is still a book publishing process. It okay. isn't. It doesn't necessarily bridge into how OGM does knowledge. So the, there's a bigger a, question. Okay, is there a Marley media model, MMM? There should be, if there isn't. And, we, and okay. is that something, so it, it's promulgating that media model I, I, is something I heard you say. Yes, yes. And, I, and I'd love to start some new norms for what happens when a book is published. Like, oh, every book should have this, 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 and this, which are new artifacts that are part of a Marley book and that are really interesting, that change the nature of the book. And then we're often running into uh, other sorts of things. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to drop another small little bombshell. Um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're pregnant, <laughs> which would be a bombshell. I, I, I have, I, I do, I do have one of those, but, but <laughs> let's not, let's not, let's okay, not, let's not talk about that, that, that today. It is a, and it is a health condition. But the idea of, of when I hear, um, when I hear dropping in some quote quasi. Um, economic structure, um, I blanch a little bit, okay? I blanch a little bit because as we've discussed many times, you know, um, that's the economic driver that's, you know, taking us all over the cliff. So I, 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 that's just my thought about, about, about that one. Um, and I want to go back into that conversation as well. Um, I think that's important for us to, to talk about. I'd love to hear from a, Stacey and Klaus too. And go ahead, Pete. A, a quick question is how do you pay for a server cost? Or if you need to hire a graphic designer to make a nice website? Yeah. Well, um it 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 happens. I you know, we have to figure it out. It's, right. It mm -hmm. sucks. I agree, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Money yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, some people, some people will write and some people will, you know, create a, a, a website. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking out, I'm just thinking out loud. Well, yeah, that's why I that's appreciate what, it. It's, it's, that's a, what it's, it's a thing that is important to hear and remember and, and keep hearing. And that's partly, Stuart, why there's currency equivalents for the different roles in the project. Okay. So that not everybody's writing stories to earn currency in the project. Um, Klaus, Stacy, thoughts, questions? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, I understand the need for structure. Um, my my focus is on content, uh, and and so what are we what are we doing here? Um, and and so I would appreciate a conversation on. You know, what do we see is the topic that we want to elaborate on, um, and and uh, is there is there you no know, structure for that conversation, not for how you write it down or express it, but for the conversation itself, because you know, a story needs a skeleton, uh, and particularly if if uh, you're combining multiple stories under an umbrella that lead towards you know, a, a given direction, which is where we started with Garden World. You now, Garden World has multiple chapters, has multiple directions, so you can pick and choose. So, so I would, um, I would think that you know, the energy of developing um, you know, road plans and 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 uh, directions and so on. Would be more content driven and and totally understanding that you know we need uh, we need to consider all these concerns that uh, Pete is expressing here. So I'm a little lost, right? Because you know, we, we have, uh, if if I may, um, we have uh, we have that. Uh, so there's a thing called Quick First Book, um, and this reminds me that we need to talk about wiki structure a little bit because, um, well, actually, I guess I have a page for it. So there's a thing called Quick First Book. Um, uh, we have uh, we have a draft summary, which is from I th is this last week, I think. Yeah. Uh, we have a draft summary. We have uh, outline A, um, 
uh, is one option. Outline B is another option. Maybe we want to meet in the middle somewhere. Um, we have some content around what is the bioregion generated by ChatGPT, which we might want to edit. Um, we get to pick a title. Um, and so then we need to talk about how we're actually going to do production of this. Um, uh, we also have a task list. So, so how what you were presenting this morning link up to this, what we discussed last time? You know, the, at, at, now, now, having, now having a template for structure of participation in Marley. Um, say we, I, I'm not saying that we have to do this, but say we kind of just copy, lift and shift, copy and paste the uh, uh, Earth, Moon, Star, Space organizational structure, tweak it up the way we want, whatever, poof. Until we have that, I'm not interested in participating. Um, so, uh, so that's be because we end up, we end up uh, chasing our tail always, right? Um, it's like, uh, um, maybe we kind of talk about it here, you know, there's a pub publishing infrastructure we kind of talked about editorial board for this. Um, who makes the decisions about stuff? Who's who's doing what? Who uh, you know whose name is on the credits for this? Who you know, and how do we make those decisions? So, um, so now that I can see that it would be pretty easy to just copy paste a structure and say this is how we're participating, you know. I'm, I feel done with Marley until Marley ratifies something like that. So I know how my contribution is, is getting plugged in and how I, how I participate in governance decisions. So Marley does not yet have, have a way to make governance decisions as, aside from our very soft kind of, you know, consensus over the course of, you know, hours of discussion kind of thing that we do in OGM. Um, I think we could level up our game. I think we could do that a lot more quickly. I think we could assign tasks and actually have people go, yep, I'm responsible for this. I'll go write that chapter. I'll go whatever. Um, and I, I kind of get, Klaus, that you're kind of like, yeah, you know, I we could just sit down and just do it, right? But and, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't need to work on content um, until I know, you know, how we're making decisions about working on the content. I don't know if that's an answer that's to chicken. I mean, that's a chicken and egg question also, right? Because sometimes content drives uh, structure. Um, organizational structure? Not necessarily. All I care about is organizational structure. Um, uh, I, I, uh, so, so to back up a little bit, Marley, Marley does have enough, did have enough structure to kind of kind of softly agree. Let me share my screen again. Um, uh, we've, we've got enough organizational structure to kind of go, yeah, I guess this is a quick first book. Yeah, I guess it's OK. Let's, let's keep doing that. Um, we can keep doing that soft uh, consensus thing about what the content of the book is, uh, you know, um, or I, I, I think I, I think we're at a nice place here where we've actually got a decent start on content. Um, maybe we can copy and paste a organizational structure. I think I think we should work on both of those together. Um, I don't think we have to stop one or the other to get going. Um, but I think it continues to be critically necessary that we talk about how we make decisions together. To the extent that um, there's not an not I don't have an understanding of how we make governance decisions and um, you know I, I wouldn't come back for more until we until we understand that not because I'm trying to be mean or something it's just you know I want to be productive with everybody's time with my time um, uh, and make this go far fast right and the way to do that is with some task assignments and decisions that get made and that kind of thing. Uh, Stacey, any thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> please, please. I'm going to try not to give you all of them. Um, 
The group that got together for Marley is a special group, in my opinion, what I mean by that, and I will generalize, they came here because they are truly trying to align their passion with doing something good in the world. So nobody here is thinking about what they're going to get paid in ownership. So it really is an, an area where we can design for trust. So I understand like when Pete was saying, I don't want to encourage people to do, you know, two hour stories, that that is a necessary concern for people outside of our group on other projects doing different things. What, I, what came to mind when you said that is what an interesting way to see what people wind up doing when they're not being paid for. That's actually what I like about it. That's a good exercise to see where people show up and what they do when money's not on the line. Um, I think that, I mean, I, I really, I came on a little bit late. I would love to see what um, David and um, Jordan have developed because I remember back in 2019, these kind of conversations that I really wanted to be part of it. Frankly, I was not welcomed at. Um, so I would like to see what came out about it, but not everybody's interested, nor do they have to be. I mean, I think somebody like Klaus or Stuart would be like, go ahead, set it up however you want. We just want to start writing. You know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Well, I don't know what Stuart is, but I know Klaus. I <laughs> feel like he just wants to get the writing stuff done and out there. And a lot of us feel the same way. So maybe, you know, I mean, again, I don't, I haven't seen it. I want to look at it, but I'd be like, fine, set it up that way. In the meantime, can we start doing the writing, knowing that, you know, there's at least some people going that we trust going back and forth and maybe doing two things together. But I don't think that people that are interested in really producing the content for the sake of getting it out to the world, not for the sake of making money or making a name for themselves or producing a book that's going to have their name on it, can get started. That, that's that's my two cents. Thanks, Stacey. I mean, Sherry, <clears throat> I, I, I see an opportunity for OGM to to be promoted, to gain exposure, you know, to share um, um, what we're talking about and the quality of these conversations. And, and otherwise, I agree with Stacey what she, what she was just saying. I mean, what's your perspective on on what do you see uh, uh, beneficial about this project? About this project, meaning Marley as a whole, or what Pete's right, bringing right. up, or yeah, I mean, you know, we're coming out. Let's write something. Let's do a book. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, how do you, how do you see that beneficial to OGM? Yeah. Um. So I think um this the call we're in right now started out as a sense doing call which started out from a frustration that we're always talking about sense making we should do something god damn it and even in sense doing we got stuck and jammed uh i think the most we did was we created one or two new puzzles for policy keys and that's kind of what sense doing did we didn't really build sense uh, make sense out of issues and post or publish any new sense made and all that and that was frustrating to me um uh, and I, I just I just really wanted to say for masking and for indoor air, uh, you know, quality, uh, could we just drop some some like here are the important questions, here are the best best answers we can figure out. Here's here are the, the, the places for research, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm completely torn on the issue Pete has put in front of us. Um, on the one hand, I think infrastructure and uh, rules of the road and Pete, I, I didn't look, I, you didn't describe, but I imagine you thought about in like intellectual property issues and what sort of licensing should the work go under, things that we talked about way back with the generative commons agreement and all that are probably part of this structure. And if that sort of thing was baked into the kind of platform you're describing, that's interesting to me. Um, the thing I don't understand, there's a couple of things I don't understand is, I, if I took a snapshot of my life at this moment, I could probably count 20 projects I'm part of. There's no world in which I can imagine wanting to trace, track, and account for 20 different currencies, nor would I know what to do with them. I don't, I don't understand a world in which you would want to have that. Like, 
if they were maybe fungible, if we had all gone wholesale into the blockchain and there were there were exchanges where these things actually worked with each other, maybe that, I don't know, but that didn't play out. We, we're not in that world. Um, so uh, I don't think of I don't, it not as currencies, but as contribution entries on a ledger. So on 20 different ledgers. So you probably keep you probably keep a, a timesheet, right? You I don't keep timesheets anywhere. I'm terrible at keeping timesheets. Okay. I've had jobs where I had to keep timesheets. I hated them with a passion. Yes. Okay. So so Fair you're enough. you're basically bumping against that energy in me, which is I can't stand tracking my time hourly. And April was a lawyer when we met, had to track her time for tenths of an hour, right? And it's like, oof, that is just awful. And and the creative work that I love going into. I, you can build that into the, the the organizational structure, actually. Which is possible. And I'd, I'd love to hear how, because because what I hear is, and we've, we've had this conversation sort of back in Lionsburg days, I'm happy to put bit in mouth if I think I can work within the system. And to me, this is putting the bit and the bridle on my head. That's what I see in the system, right? Also, I see that we're kind of creating a finite game out of what feels like an infinite game in the sense of we're gonna have roles. And as soon as you've got roles, then it's like, hey, you're an editor. What are you doing writing content? Um, I see that happening. I, I may be wrong. I don't see that happening. Well, but 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 as soon as you start defining like where the lanes are, then everybody's like stay in your lane or whatever could happen if, if the group gets like more political about the structure. But I, I don't see but, that happening. Okay. Um, I, 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 a thing I could see happening is, hey, you're on the editorial board and I want my, book published before the other person's book and even can, knowing can you help me out but even knowing who to talk to meaning so, that there is an editorial board and there are humans on it is useful in that case right yeah so that's good um so so let me let me let me back up a little bit yeah we can all like chill a little bit i don't care how it happens marley needs to make decisions like what work work what book are we working on is this new topic okay or not? Um, if we make an ebook and turn it into a Kindle and sell it in Jeff Bezos's um, uh, Garden of Commercialism for two ninety nine, where does you know uh, if if we have to buy a tool to help us make that? Who pays for the tool? If we have income from the book, where does it go? So. A perfect way to do this would be for Klaus or Stuart or Jerry or Stacy or me to say, eh, I'll make all the decisions. I'm gonna be the benevolent dictator here. Just ask me a question and I'll give you an answer. I would be okay with that actually. Um, I don't have a problem with whatever organizational structure we have. Um, I'm offering an organizational structure which seems to get it, it's it's echoing more and more across the you know across the groups as a way that decentralized groups are going to work together. But um, maybe I'm way ahead of the curve. Maybe I'm two years early. Um, Marley has to have a way of making this decisions that's better than we spend an hour kind of talking and we make some soft decisions about kind of what we think is going on is is my main point um so last time we ended up at the end um running some questions through chat gpt and getting back an outline for a possible book which i think is outline b uh which is around bioregionalism and a piece of me was like looking forward to it because I don't understand how bioregionalism is the preferred structure for the first quick book we'd like to put out, unless we're writing about bioregionalism. But I thought we were writing about a slightly different topic. So I was I was interested in the sort of a content conversation about the structure of the book that I would compromise whatever if I understood whatever, and we would in in gentle sort of um, discourse and agreement figure out. Oh, okay. This is a book we all we all like, or some of us like, and figure out who's participating, and then figure out what the outline is, and then start saying, "Sounds great. Which chapters does anybody want to work on? Where are the documents for the for the chapters? Let's go." And then getting to a point where we have just enough text written that the, that we start to hit the Marley production process question of, "Oh, okay, great. 
now what do we do to make this all roll up into a book? And then we might have to buy software, we might have to do whatever, get to those questions. And it might be that I pay for the software and that's okay. And that would be fine. I mean, I don't think these are $10,000 uh, bits of software we're talking about. We're, we're talking about small units of, 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 of funding, I think. Um, so I could see doing all of that pretty informally. And I could also see that even for the tiny group that we are, we have really pretty, maybe different ideas about what the book might be and where it might go. But I was excited about the prospect of talking about who is our audience, how do, and, and you saw me trying to sort of curate the the project a couple of call and over the last couple of calls to let's not include shelter because that just blows the doors open on too many issues let's cut it down to what things can do people can do pragmatically with food and then and, and sort of doing a little bit of scope limiting so that the first the quick first book would be um limited and and sort of sensible and not just a pandora's box of uh, of things that we never got to really talk about anyway um again if there's a platform that helps us execute on this, that sets up ground rules that work for everybody and a way of doing it, I'm still happy to jump in and do that. I just wonder sort of what our consensus is on, on the thing that, you, um, um, that you're suggesting for us. And, and, I, and the thing I've seen crater on awful, and, and I apologize, I don't know how else to say this, but in the three years of OGM, the thing I've seen crater in most of our efforts to get stuff done, was suddenly getting drifting off the thing we were trying to get done into structure about how to do the thing we were going to get done. The I forget how you said that. Um, we have we have wound up in a meta conversation every time. Every time the, we got close to doing, we yeah, wound the, up in a meta conversation about the doing. The the thing that comes to mind that cratered uh, for OJM was the OJM forum, and it fell down exactly on not being able to make decisions. Uh, the OGM mm -hmm. forum cratered because I did not find the time in my life to go participate. No, it was doing really well. It had good participation. It, I would never the, shut it down. The the structure of it was getting weird, and right. we needed OGM. We needed OGM to decide if it was okay to appoint a few people who are ready and willing to go to to actually reorganize reorganize the uh, structure, and that's how it fell down. You have we a couldn't post decide that. Says, no. What is on there, Stuart? Can't read it. Yeah, um, we can't. Agreements, agreements for the results. results. Got Intent, it. Vision, roles, promises, time and value, measurements of satisfaction, concerns and fears, renegotiation, consequences, conflict resolution, agreement and trust. It's a good list. Is it from one of your books? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I wrote a book called The Book of Agreement. Hello. <laughs> Here it is. You know, and, and what to me, what needs to be done is we need to sit down and kind of scope this out. You know, the whole notion of how do you want to operate? Ready, fire, aim, or ready, aim, fire? Just to create a little clarity. And everything that was talked about today fits into this structure, but, but in, in some way, shape or form, but we need to have that overarching, what's our charter? You know, what's, what's our charter? What's our, what's our, what's our agreement? That's, that's what I'm, <laughs> pardon me. That's what I'm struggling. That's what I'm, that's what I'm struggling with. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I, I think what I heard Jerry say was we can make decisions. Um, uh, we, we would kind of in general sort of discourse and figure it out. So I think that's Jerry's, um, uh, proposed governance structure is just kind of talking it through and figuring it out. Am I catching that? What I, heard, what I heard Jerry say just now is that we have a tendency who started great <laughs> to start a conversation and then we get lost in how to do it right we get lost in the uh, well, mechanics of it because it's because we're all too smart and too experienced <laughs> yeah and, and the conversation that we had last week for example was you notice know, uh, when you talk about food you should really talk about bioregions uh and i mentioned some examples and in fact i was doing a meeting and I posted it uh, last week. I was uh, make, giving a presentation to 
uh, a, a magazine, the largest magazine in the world, uh, catering to bio to the biofuel sector. You know, and I explained why bioregions are so important. But you can't dominate the landscape with GMO crops you know, that overpower uh, local soil and watersheds. But you need to honor and respect you know, the regionality and the uniqueness of bioregions to do that. So um, that is a complex topic that requires multiple perspectives to really turn it into a story that makes sense to people because I'm completely into storytelling. <laughs> now the, the, I mean, it's really interesting when with Gene Bellinger and I, how we work together because Gene is all about making charts and graphics and all this stuff. And it helps me immensely to advance my story, right? <laughs> But at the end of the day, when you are talking to audiences, you can't come with a chart. You have to come with a story. You know, so I explained, uh, and, and I posted that the, the video, I explained to the audience there um, in a story format why you know, they should be paying attention to bioregions. And, and so, and, and, and I would love to find ways to advance that, right? And, and to, to, to hear a systems thinker explain why he hasn't quite gotten it yet and there is something missing in the story you know, to make it a little bit more uh, understandable and to you know, <laughs> Stacey, say from an emotional perspective, you know, this doesn't quite resonate yet with me. So you shape that story into something you know, that really, okay, we got it, right? And then, then you have something to publish. And then I would say you have a content you know, where you think, so how do we best package this kind of content material into a system structure that we can perpetuate and that, that, that uh, you know, has legs, that, that, that promotes OGM and all of those things. So just from a process standpoint, right, we, I think when we talk so much about the process structure, we're putting the infamous horse before the cart, behind the cart, right? Or the cart before the horse, or however that works. <laughs> a metaphor horse and a metaphor cart. Yeah. Um, I I think what we do is we have lots of muscles that pull, and we don't have a, a skeleton for them to pull against. So the organizational structure I want to see gives us enough structure to make make movement instead of just having these muscles twitch back and forth. So. Um, so, so kind of to come back around, Jerry, um, I think what you're suggesting is that we can just talk and whatever decisions come up, we'll kind of just make them. So Pete, I'm not rejecting the, the model you just presented. I'm saying there are questions of it that I'm ha having trouble reconciling and parts yep. of it run against how my brain works and how I can work. Yep. And it seems like a really... What I was thinking as you were describing it was that if I wanted to create a cottage industry to mass produce tiny stories, this is a pretty good framework. And a bunch of people could make a living making tiny stories and producing them and, and churning them out. Um, that's what it felt like. It's like, it's like th this is a good structure for a factory of stories. Um, and I don't want to be so, in a factory so of then, stories. I well, don't, really, so I don't even know where at, my story ends and the next story begins. Look I, I one level create, up yeah. above that. It's that the, the structure I talked about was a way to make little stories, which, yeah, whatever. Isn't that kind of the same thing that Marley is doing? And if we tweaked the rules, wouldn't we get neo books instead of little stories? Sort of, but if the thing- Wouldn't the, it, but if wouldn't the, the structure help value, us define yeah. who makes decisions, what, what I'm talking about is, is kind of talking about like, let's, so, so the let's talk about stuff and kind of kind of make decisions when we need to. It feels like it's just going to be slow to me. It feels like everybody kind of angles around and we don't want to hurt each other's feelings about making a decision and you know it's we want to be comfortable with each other and I don't know that I don't know that we do that I think that we we uh, or we can talk things through and we can sort things out I don't I don't know that we dodge things to not hurt each other's feelings um, um I think we can okay. get this stuff um, um so I I 
now I'm going to get pissy, I guess. I apologize. I, and I don't mean it. I don't mean to be pissy. This is a genuine feeling. I apologize for pushing us a little too fast. Um, I, I am deep in the weeds on this essentially technology. It's technology. It's not, you know, and Jerry, you're right. It has, it has edges and some of them feel sharp. Um, uh, this is my dream for what Marley, I feel could be. I feel like Marley could be a machine to be building new books, doing new media stuff. And we could do it fast. We could do it efficiently. Uh, we could attract, we could say, hey, we need some people to be ed editorial board. We need some people to be governance board. We need some, we could attract more people to do more stuff and get it done faster because we would have an organizational structure. That's my dream. Oh, yeah. And I'm and I'm open so, to that. Go ahead, Stuart. Yeah. yeah. So so my offer is at any time you want, um, I will facilitate an agreement slash charter slash overview, which can be used to fill in any of the details. For example, you know, Pete, you were just talking about, you know, how do we make decisions? Great. Part of the promises of the elements that I just sent you is, here's what we promise to do when decisions need to be made. And, and we actually articulate that. Okay. But, but I, 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 I think, I really do think that you need that big picture and then you have stuff that you can hang your hat on. I mean, I have, I have this vision um, um, that, yeah, all of these books can be produced, as Jerry talked about, access to some of the um, pieces of the, you know, the, the, the information that's present in various forms in various places. But let's, let's create um, kind of an overriding structure um, that we can operate from. Uh, sounds great. I like that. Um, Pete, if we decided now to lift and shift the, the framework you said, what would that mean we would wind up doing right now for Marley? Um, in the next 20 minutes? Or in the um, next, on the next call? In the next, in the next couple of days or on the next call. But I, I, I'm like, if we wanted to implement what you're saying, what does that imply for us like immediately? Um, I, I think, I think, a, a thing to do is to talk about roles, um, define roles a little bit better. Um, I don't know if that's true or not because there's actually in the, uh, in the, the original, you know, we have roles kind of set up for Marley already. And we in borrowed from publishing and that's what we're sort of working with. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you need, you need, you need something more than just the publishing roles. You know, you, you need, you need some, you know, infrastructure roles, you know, who takes responsibility for what in terms of infrastructure. And, and go ahead. So I kind of, kind of probably what Stuart said. Um, I don't think we have a crisp statement of what Marley is or what Marley does. Um, or what we want it, the vision we have for uh, our intention and vision for what it is that we want it to be. I maybe, maybe I to answer your question a little bit better, Jerry. I, I'm flummoxed a little bit and, 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 I'm, and I'm a hurt um, for no good reason. None of you have hurt me. Um, no, I, you know, um, I have a, a cute thing and I thought it would be easy and it's not. Um, I, I have no reason to expect that it would be easy. Um, to answer your question, uh, if it were me, what I would do is lift and shift, copy and paste uh, the uh, EMSS structure. I would change anything that looked like it needed to be changed and say, here's the rules of the game. Who wants to be on the, uh, who wants to be on the um, governance? Uh, I forget what I call them. I, I like my thing there better than um, uh, governance board council. Sorry, let Whatever me find the, the yeah. right. Let Editor me editorial it. council or something like that. Yeah, let me actually find it. Uh, uh, committee. 
uh, this week I like committee better than I like board and council. Okay. Um, so who's on the who's on the governance committee? Who's making decisions? Um, we do not have that yet, as far as I can tell. Um, and I think it's important. Uh, who's who wants to be on the editorial committee? Who's going? So then, right away from that, the editorial committee can say here's what a neo book looks like it's this many pages long it's got this kind of chapters it's whatever right um kind of immediately the government's committee can say um here's a few things that we need to do we need to we need to announce ourselves better to the um uh to ogm um uh, a thing that i actually have on we have a we have a, a Google Docs agenda page, I think for this call, um, which I set up last week or last week. One of those things is restructure the wiki pages a little bit better. Right now we've got kind of a broken structure in the, in the wiki and we're gonna keep fighting against it. So governance, uh, governance committee can, you know, charter me to, or you or me and Stacy or whoever to fix the wiki pages. You know, is it okay if I fix the wiki pages, um, you know? And, or instead of me bringing it up as an individual, what you want is for the governance committee to go, hey, what's our list of things that we need to get done? Oh, look, we need to restructure the, 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 the web folders. Pete, can you do that? Yes, I'll do that. We don't have that right now. We have, everything is emergent and everything kind of gets done on a wish and a prayer and, and discussing it and hoping it gets done. And we don't bring up things like, you know, project management, for instance. Is it more, in need, I'm sorry, I have a question. No question. Is, it, is it more in need for delegation or for giving permission? Like which direction? Delegation. Um, a couple observations, and we've only got 14, 16 minutes left. Um, we may not have Marley calls anymore, given sort of where we are right now. We don't have critical mass of people. We don't have content. We're at odds on a couple of different issues here among the five of us who've shown up. So I, I fear that there's no Marley in a couple of weeks if we sort of go like this. Um, I, my own instinct is that we attract new participants by actually turning out a quick first book. That, that if somebody says, oh shit, there's an OGM thing that actually turns something out, and I see how it smells and I might want to do one of those. And they're saying, if you have an idea that feels like one of these books, come on in and play, then we might actually get a body of people where who's going to be on the editorial committee, who's going to be this role. Then we have actually human bodies to play with to put in those roles. But right now, if what we're doing is designing a big structure and saying, who wants to do this? We don't have critical mass. We don't, and I, and I don't expect us to get critical mass if what we say I, is we I have think framework for publishing. I think you're over overinflating that that the amount of structure the big structure um well i'm just saying i'm just saying the thing that i think will attract anybody else to join us is seeing some success with output i i agree and i have a, a strong hypothesis um that the people that we need to attract will want to know what are you doing which is a That's conversation i'm in it. totally happy to have at that moment and then we can say, hey, Pete has developed a really nifty format and framework, which, we, which we've which we been sort of wrestling with as we've been doing this, this, this content thing, which we would now, now that we have 12 people here, would like to go for it and test this out. I'm completely in on that. I just think that doing that right now feels like we're going to lose whatever momentum we've got because we're going to lose Klaus if we don't get working on content and I, kind of maybe feel me. like. Yeah, we're gonna I lose. Like... We're gonna lose you. Lose you if we don't have a system that accounts for value. No, nope. you just all said... I care about is governance. All I care about is somebody needs to say, "I'm making the decisions." I'm making can... decisions. Sounds okay. great. What should we do? <laughs> what should we do? Yeah. <laughs> we should assemble a team to help Klaus write the book, and assemble a team to help figure out who's going to work with infrastructure um can we write i i won't be able to remember that unless we write it down can we write okay. that down yeah so i need to get somebody to help me with writing and, stuff. and what do you mean by assemble a team i don't understand what that means it means somebody that could put onto the computer things that come out of my mouth
Well, it's roughly captured in chat a little bit. So two teams, one, <clears throat> one to sort of come around class and say, okay, what is the book? <clears throat> Which is basically an editorial staff of some sort, editorial committee um, <clears throat> of the type that Pete was describing, I think, that, that and, makes decisions about what yeah. it is and what goes where. And let like, me ask you something, because uh, this is just, I wanna get feedback. I think the way we did it a little bit last week in the terms of a call all working together is a nice way to do that. That also creates something that people can watch, which is a whole nother sprout. Can I have any feedback on that? I'm not sure what you just meant by what that last piece you said. Last week, we spent the last however long actually writing stuff together, which I would like to see a whole call doing that is that a process that works well i think it is I, the I, I i tend to i i generally agree i i generally agree uh specifically i think we don't need to have we we don't necessarily need to have everybody i think we would have worked quicker last week even if we had three people doing that instead of five and i think that's true again so I like I like that depends I on the intention of the meeting, Pete, because the last 20 minutes or so of the meeting last week, you also participated in content. You, know, you went to chat GPT and so so you yeah, have to I, go yeah. into the meeting, you go into the meeting is the intention. Today is a content day. We focus on you know what are we going to what, write? I, I agree. And then in another meeting, we say, okay, so now. They're coming close to publishing, or we actually have a story. You know, how do we go about uh, uh, stepping that into? You know, so I, you, I agree. What, the, what the I'm... reason why I'm saying it's a chicken and egg question, you know, is because you got to have a product first before you package it. You know? And we don't have a product. We talk about maybe. I, product, I agree. But... And what it, the point I was trying to make is that not necessarily everybody needs to or wants to participate in content creation. I actually had a lot of fun last week. And maybe if we had, so Stacy, you get to decide what we're doing next week. I'll decide whether or not I show up um, exactly. based on what we're doing um, or based on, on what you ask me to do. Um, but it's the, the thing that, the point I was trying to make is that I don't think every call should be everybody working on content or everybody working on structure. I don't think the whole team needs to be involved in a particular activity is the point I was trying to make. We should pick and choose the, the people on, on a call or on, a, on, a, you know, on, a, on an activity. Well, I think they should pick and choose, but I think they should be able to go back and forth. So if we say, you know, next week we're working on the content for this and at the same time there will be, or, you know, and there's another meeting at this link where they're doing this or maybe directly after we report or I report, this is, this is what we got out of this call. Give this to the next team to see what happened and whatever they're going to do with it. I think, I think last week we were collaborating to gestate the beginnings of the quick first book. And that involved all of us because we're all here and, and, and sort of eager to see this thing happen. We, pr we participated in different ways during the call. It was really interesting. And we ended up with the questions that I put, uh, I put in, the, in the conversation a little bit earlier, which is like, I don't understand why bioregionalism is so important. A conversation I was looking forward to have and be convinced about, and I put a potential title for a book. Uh, like if the book were titled Why Bioregionalism is Key to Improving the Food System and Solving Climate Change, I could totally see that the structure of it would be all about bioregionalism. And now I just need to know what goes into the chapters and why, like, like, why is it so complicated? Because bioregionalism seems to me to be a pretty cut and dried kind of like, damn, you want to do that? Now what? Let's go, right? So, so, but that was a conversation I was really looking forward to having. And then, once we had just stated something that felt like an outline, then the team that was going to write that book would decide, okay, we need to schedule a, 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 some separate calls to go do this thing and to just, whoever wants to go write that book, show up on these other calls for that project team. And then that project team is its own editorial board or whatever other kind of structure it wants to have. That makes total sense to me, but we were really, really early in the process, just trying to bubble out one thing that felt like the quick first book, I think. Is is everybody okay taking with Stacy taking charge of the Marley project? Yeah. I am. 
Queen well, Stacey. Stacey. I, I'm just making the decision. I'm asking for feedback, and then I'll just make the decision. That's well, right. To, to my understanding, Stacey, you're going to know what we should do and tell us well, what no, the project I, is doing. I know enough. I don't have the experience to do that. I can listen to what I'm hearing each of you saying. I can offer up, you know, I can make, like you said, the problem was that in the old projects that there were decisions that needed to be made and nobody made them. So I would expect you to say, Stacy, we have to decide, are we doing this or this? And then I can give an answer because I've been listening to- You, you don't need to make the decision. You can actually delegate the decision. The important thing is to, yeah. so, what what your job will be is asking are there decisions that we need to make and then delegating the decision uh, Stuart, before you run off um you you uh, you're talking about this container principle is that the creative structure that you use to put a story inside yeah. i need we yeah, need those yeah. Products, that's right? the that's the that's the container for you need a container to hold what it is that you're doing. Okay, so I know nothing about this, right? So I would love to learn from you one well, to work. I that. also I also posted the essential elements of agreement. Okay, I'll we'll read that after I just pulled it down. Thank um, you. it also maybe you can relate to it, Klaus, by thinking of it in terms of even project management. Like, what's the project charter? Okay. Before you begin, you need to have clarity about what the what the what what the charter is and who's going to do what and how is it that you're going to create and bring into uh, being and manifest the vision that you want to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we need that, uh, Stacy. I'll I'll send you an was, email. Well, I was I just going to say, that. is this is this an example of where I could say? Stuart, could you give us a presentation? <laughs> we arrange for yeah, so, of course, of course. Let's arrange for a time where you give us a presentation on that. Great. I'm that happy. Could, happen, could happen next Monday during this call. I'm happy to happy to do that. Okay. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's what is it's like storming, norming, forming kind of thing. Is that what it is, right? So <laughs> that's all good. Thanks. All. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, forming, storming, norming, performing. That's, okay. that's the one, yes. Except for lawyers, know. they get stuck in, in, in billing. They get, they get stuck in storming. They never get out of storming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, all right. everybody. Very, very good. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Oh.